Good afternoon. Uh, oh, morning. <laughs> Nigeria, exactly. <laughs> I'm yet to get into the time changes. Um, I would like to thank the Center for Strategic and International Studies uh, for inviting me to this forum. And more importantly, uh, I congratulate the Center for its agenda setting program on Nigeria. I believe strongly that uh, current work by CSIS can provide the U.S. people, business, and the Obama administration the information and analysis required to engage strategically with business, government, and the people of Nigeria. Let me also welcome and thank all of you for coming to this session, and in particular, Stephen Morrison, uh, Jennifer, who is not here, and uh, Brian for anchoring and uh, coordinating the session. As you are all aware, the president of Nigeria, Malam Umaru Musa Yaradua, took ill in November 2009 and had to be flown to Saudi Arabia for treatment. Due to his prolonged absence, a wave of uncertainty, threats, and near disaster enveloped the polity, and uh, something had to be done to pull us back from the brink. A joint resolution of the National Assembly that was anchored on the doctrine of necessity was passed, thus we paving way for Pres Vice President Goodluck Jonathan to ascend the position of acting president and commander in chief of the armed forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Since the passage of the resolution, the acting president has taken necessary action to strengthen government capacity to meet key challenges. These actions include the appointment of a presidential <coughs> advisory council under the leadership of two distinguished Nigerians, Theophilus Danjuma, a retired general, and Ben Wabwezi, a well-known professor of constitutional law. A new national security advisor, General Ali Guzo, and 24 hours ago, the reconstitution of the Executive Council of the Federation, among several other important changes. The goal, according to Dr. Goodluck Ebele Jonathan, acting president, is to quote him, stabilize the polity, get Nigeria back to work, and drive the processes upholding our unity, citizenship, and development, unquote. One of, the, one of my American friends who is seated in the audience, here, right here, said to me weeks ago, quote, Oronto, the news from your country makes my blood pressure to palpitate too dangerously. <laughs> well, with Boko Haram, Abdul Mutalab, the reoccurring just crisis, and car bombs in worry in mind, all I can offer to my friend then and now was regrets and request that we all work together to avert such unwarranted palpitations. In this wired world of today, bad news of the shocking variety can without warning be delivered to you without solicitation. How I wish the good news from Nigeria gets dispatched as quickly too. I have always held the view that Nigeria's political stability and economic prosperity is in Africa's and humanity's interest. Therefore, doing legitimate business with Nigeria and Nigerians in the area of job creation, building peace, protecting the environment and human rights, rebuilding and expanding our decaying infrastructure, and investing in education and health delivery system are critical. The Libyan strongman, Colonel Mohamed Gaddafi, contributing to the discourse on Nigeria, made two suggestions, which he has since dispatched top diplomats to clarify and apologize. First, he said, Nigeria should be divided into two, what he called Muslim not and Christian South. Then, 48 hours later, he reversed himself to say, no, it should be divided along tribal lines. To Muhammad, Gaddafi, to Muhammad Gaddafi's new dream, present Nigeria will give birth to 250 countries. It is not clear whether Gaddafi's suggestions are only in line with the predictions coming from the United States that Nigeria will disintegrate in 2015. It is this background of festival of bad news that current policy options in the governors of Nigeria are presently directed. In the year ahead, the federal government aims to focus on the following. 
electoral reforms to enthrone electoral integrity and strengthen democracy in Nigeria, resolving the Niger Delta crisis and enthroning a sustainable framework for development of the region while accelerating investment, reforming and strengthening the energy sector through a strong and viable Petroleum Industry Act and a recalibration of our approach to eliminating energy poverty in Nigeria. Expand national capacity in the agricultural sector as part of our, our overall strategy to promote food security and diversify our economy. Strengthen the financial services sector. Enhance anti-corruption and anti-money laundering initiatives. Promote human rights and eliminate impunity. These all flow from the seven-point agenda outlined by President Umaru Yaradua, and they will all come, of course, built on the progress that has already been made, particularly in the first three sectors. So there will be continuity with additional vigor, urgency, and fresh perspectives. Acting President Jonathan, in a recent address at a forum on electoral integrity, regretted that Quote, in an era of advances in information and telecommunication technology in Nigeria, our young people are yearning to participate in politics and to bring the things that matter most to them into the political arena. Unfortunately, electoral malpractice and violence is keeping them away and breeding frustration throughout the country. Unquote. The acting president believes that of all the challenges Nigeria currently faces, Instituting electoral integrity is the greatest as it has a corresponding impact on all sectors. A few weeks ago, the acting president sent the Justice Uwe's committee report on altered to the National Assembly to guide constitutional changes that will promote electoral integrity and justice. The National Assembly has already successfully passed changes in the Constitution that will now go through at least two thirds of the state houses of assembly in the country. We are very confident that these changes will pass successfully. While constitutional legal changes are important, the acting president holds a view that actual action of the government must reflect the desire for positive change. The Anambra State Governorship election and the ESAC or Central Constituency election in Edo State House of Assembly have already been used by the acting president to demonstrate his commitment to free and fair elections. Most people agree that despite logistical challenges occasioned by the tardiness of the electoral umpire INEC, the elections were free and fair and definitely devoid of government interference. The acting president made sure that everybody understood correctly that the federal government wanted genuine elections. Subsequent elections must follow this trend. Another key challenge that confronts Nigeria today is peace and stability in the Niger Delta. We all know that Nigeria is totally dependent on the Niger Delta for current and future energy needs, including electricity. This means that all national goals in energy self-sufficiency are meaningless as long as the Niger Delta is unstable. Last year, Nigeria fell far short of the target 6,000 megawatts, mainly as a result of gas supply problems associated with the crisis in the Delta. This had an impact on quality of life all over the country and poor industrial capacity utilization, as well as the effect of diversity investment away from Nigeria. Some of you would have noticed that the acting president has retained the power portfolio in the recent reconstitution of the executive council. The acting president is determined to put in place a robust framework to tackle the epileptic power supply that is the bane of our efforts to develop and industrialize our nation. While an efficient and effective oil and gas sector remains anchor of Nigeria's energy output, we must not lag behind the world in seeking to promote alternative sources of energy. Alternative energy will diversify our energy grid, reduce our dangerous reliance on hydrocarbons, but above all, help to preserve and sustain the integrity of the ecology in the Niger Delta and in the North. The entire national, state, and local government procurement plants are also dependent on the oil from the Niger Delta. The Nigerian economy is totally and helplessly dependent on oil from the Niger Delta. Conflict in the Delta has reduced Nigeria's production capacity over the past three years with an impact on federal, state, and local government budgets, and consequently, the entire economy. 
In order to reverse the negative impact of the Delta conflict on Nigeria, President Yaradua in May 2009 offered an unconditional amnesty to militants in the region. The amnesty was accepted by majority of the militants. A disarmament exercise was carried out as part of the amnesty, and currently a few thousand disarmed ex-militants are waiting to participate in the post-amnesty rehabilitation program. The post-amnesty program has been slow and disappointing, but a new impetus in na is now being given to the program, which will encompass reorientation, retraining, job creation, and entrepreneurial support for the youths of the Niger Delta, particularly the ex-militants. Also planned are greater infrastructural, social, and economic investment in the Niger Delta. They will be underpinned by the implementation of the 10% community equity ownership of oil assets through community trust. Acting President Goodluck Jonathan will vigorously pursue this vision of President Yaradua. The federal government will accomplish the passage of the petroleum bill into law within the year. The acting president wants to maintain a strong balance of foreign investment and local participation. Everyone must understand that Nigeria seeks greater benefit from its oil and gas resources, but we'll st we still value our partnership with Western IOCs, even though the Chinese, the Russians, and others have recently shown a tendency towards competitiveness. We must therefore deepen dialogue, but swiftly move to accomplish an oil and gas regime that is equitable, stable and sustainable, and above all, community and environment friendly. In the year ahead, the government will continue to support commercial farming initiatives that are viable, but will also ensure that all government agricultural programs are implemented efficiently to minimize leakages, graft, insider dealings that do not benefit the agriculture sector. To this end, government intends to implement an overhaul of the system that deliver hundreds of billions to that sector. Investment will be tied directly to results. We are aware that as a result of recent Central Bank of Nigeria's intervention, investors are closely watching the sector. The process of establishing an asset management company is now ongoing. As soon as this is concluded, the company will be capitalized to buy toxic assets of the bank's balance sheet and help to reinject liquidity into the system. Already, the CVN has injected more than $4 billion into affected banks. This year will be one of economic re-engineering and transformation in Nigeria. To accomplish this, we have a world-class economic management team headed by the immediate past managing director of Goldman Sachs International. Good news from Nigeria is beginning to trickle in. Yesterday, the Financial Times headline on Nigeria reads, quote, Nigeria cabinet reshuffle lifts investors. Other great news of the heroism of ordinary Nigerians who on a daily basis preach peace, non-violently protest on just policies that deny them their right to survival, or those who in insist on a united, strong, and equitable Nigeria are yet to be hailed across the world's major news outlets. These citizens, whether from the Niger Delta, the Kamodogu, Ogunoshu, or Nambra Basin deserve commendation. Hobbled in communities and villages, they are the heroes of Nigeria's struggle for what Dr. Jonathan called economic self-sufficiency and political maturity. The fight against corruption at all levels will be escalated. To achieve these anti-corruption structures will be strengthened and remandated. The recent killing in Jos have again brought the issue of human rights and peaceful coexistence to the fore. The federal government is determined to effectively put an end to all forms of impunity. To this end, hundreds of suspects in the just case have already been arrested and are currently undergoing trial. Uh, measures are also being taken to reassess and improve the security situation throughout the country so as to safeguard lives and property. The distance between government and civil society is being abridged and it's, it is Dr. Jonathan's desire to work closely with civil society to identify cases of human rights abuse to ensure that they are addressed within the provisions of the law. For the first time in Nigeria, peaceful assembly and protests were not being visited by the ugly specter of violence, tear gas, and buttons on the innocent. This momentum will have to be encouraged, and where necessary, government will pursue the enactment of new legislations to protect all generation of rights for all Nigerians. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, 
the federal government of Nigeria continues to place high value on the relationship with the United States of America. And during the year ahead, we hope that uh, it can be strengthened, and particularly in the areas that I've just addressed. The charge given to Dr. Jonathan by 150 million Nigerians is that he must help unlock the many doors of hope to our country and deliver on the promise of good governance. This is an urgent task, and he needs the support of us all. I thank you very much for your kind attention. Laranto, thank you so much um, for that eloquent statement. Um, let me open with just one broad question, and then ask you to respond to that, and then we'll, um, we'll open the floor and, and collect some thoughts, comments, questions from, from our other members here. Um, I also want to thank Brian Kennedy for pulling all of this together uh, from here at CSIS and neglected to thank you, Brian, at the outset. The, when you look at the, the transition that you're describing here and, and the uh, very ambitious agenda, um, the acting president's been wise in trying to focus down on three priorities uh, of the seven that, you, that President Yarajua had enumerated. He's, he's saying, okay, in this next transition period, make a big push on those special three each of which is terribly complicated and difficult. Time is very short in this period. Time is going to be very short. Because of the nature of the transition, the incentives on many of the key players will be to delay, potentially. Uh, and there will be resistance among many, in, from many quarters uh, because of entrenched interests, because of the expectation that you, you enter the next cycle of competition uh, that may uh, that may reset the political boundaries or the realities, uh, and and the acting president is operating with with only a partial mandate in some ways, right? With a with a with with an ambiguous authority and mandate in moving this forward. So, could you talk to us about what's your strategy to carry forward? those agenda on those three key items and not find, you know, and be able to transcend uh, the, 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 the clear challenges around a very short timeline, uh, a set of incentives that may favor people stalling or resisting, uh, and perhaps uh, less than complete authority and mandate and ability to sort of move that forward. Could you, could you comment on those sort of broad questions and then we can open the floor to um, I think if you follow Nigeria closely, especially in the last three, four months, no Nigerian leader has received the kind of uh, enthusiastic support that Dr. Jonathan has received. None. If you were to plot that on an opinion poll, you can say he has maybe 85% uh, approval rating. So people will be his key ally in the processes as it drives those policies for change. Um, the politicians as well will be allies, as you can see from the National Assembly response to getting the new constituted minister to work. Mm -hmm. It took less than three days for them to pass those, um, those ministers that we are nominated. It means the National Assembly uh, despite the initial lukewarm, is now on board the process of delivering on good governance. So if you have the allies, if you have the people as allies and you have the National Assembly behind you, it will, it, the, the question of time because becomes a question of uh, urgent priority, even in, the, in, the, in Dr. Jonathan implementing the agenda and in the expectation of the people. Um, it's, it's critical that uh, in any political setting there will be those who will resist. You, if you want to lose a privilege, if you are used to having votes allocated to you so that you can go into becoming a local government chairman or a, a governor, and you now have a process of uh, transparent election where the leadership recruitment processes are based on uh, electoral integrity, then you will want to resist. You want the old order to remain. However, uh, strengthening the anti-corruption institution and insisting that uh, the people's power prevail 
I think it will be a, a positive antidote against those who may want to resist along those lines. Um, if is narrowing his priorities to three key areas is all part of his understanding that he cannot take everything within this short period, roughly 13 months period. You don't, you don't want to do everything within this short period. Just deliver on those urgent issues and allow the Nigerian or Nigerians to decide the next uh, uh, line of action as we approach a very important election in the coming uh, months. So that will be my response. Thank you. Thank you very much.